About 5% of Darwin's correspondents were women, and these include friends, family and fellow scientists. Many people are surprised to hear that Victorian women were working in science, and that's one of the reasons we wanted to put together this book. Firstly, we wanted to highlight the voices of Victorian women who were working in science and corresponding with Darwin, and we also wanted to look at the lives of other women, not necessarily scientists, who were part of Darwin's life. Darwin said in one of his publications, Descent of Man, that he thought women had evolved to be less intelligent than men, and that they wouldn't become any more intelligent until they were breadwinners. Now, in fact, Darwin knew plenty of female breadwinners, and one of the most interesting was Mary Treat, an American botanist and entomologist from New Jersey. Mary Treat earned her own living by writing on science for popular magazines and collecting specimens for other scientists. She first wrote to Darwin to explain that she'd found a way to control the sex of a particular butterfly. And she kept these at home. And she found that some caterpillars left their food in order to pupate earlier than others. These were always male butterflies. But if she encouraged them to feed for longer, they turned into female butterflies. Treat also wrote to Darwin about a new species of water lily that she had found in Florida. My greatest find has been a new water lily. It is really astonishing how it could have escaped the botanists. There are acres of it in extent growing in the bays and coves of the St. John's River. It is one of the most beautiful plants I ever beheld, and when I first saw it, my heart fairly stood still. Now, it turned out that this had actually appeared in Audubon's Birds of America, but everybody thought it was just a pretty background for the swan until Treat looked at it. They didn't realize it was an entirely new species. Letters are a very important medium for women to engage with Darwin, women who were, for the most part, excluded from public debates, and they're able to address Darwin directly. And one of the most interesting and searching letters that we have about religion is from Mary Everest Boole. Mary Boole was an accomplished mathematician. In her letter to Darwin, she raises questions about the implications of his theory for religious belief, the power of moral choice, and goodness of God. She concludes by saying, my own impression has always been that you had supplied one of the missing links between the facts of science and the promises of religion. Science must take her path and theology hers. And you are not responsible if the meeting point should still be very far off. The variety and extent of his correspondence with women, I think, will come as a surprise to many readers. And even for those of us who work every day on these letters, gathering all of this material into one volume really made it much more powerful, and it produced some real revelations.